Hey everybody, welcome back to a, another episode of Wrenching with Rob. I apologize, it's, it's been a little bit. Uh, had some things happen in my life. Uh, I've been needing some help out here and uh, I finally got it in the form of our daughter, McKenna Lee. So that happened. Uh, it's been almost three weeks now since she was born. She came three weeks early. So theoretically, she was supposed to be born right about now, and I probably could have had a couple more episodes popped out since then. So uh, it's crazy hair day, as you can tell. The, the hair is definitely uh, out of whack. It is stupid hot here down in Florida with uh, high heat, high humidity. So I really uh, haven't put a whole lot into the appearance, as you can see. So we're back on the 87YJ here, and the last time we had an episode pop out here, we had it going, you know, with my crazy earphones on because it was, uh, again, it was stupid loud. And uh, as I, my famous words are, uh, it was angry. It was definitely not really hitting on all cylinders properly. It would catch every now and then, and uh, it's really hard to tell because there was absolutely zero exhaust on it. So off camera, I actually put the tailpipe on it, or at least the downpipe, no muffler, but it, it contains it a little bit better and gets it away from the motor so I can kind of hear what was going on. So again, off camera, I did some stuff and you wouldn't been able to hear anything anyway. And I'm sure most people can just research this kind of stuff if you're troubleshooting it. But what I did to troubleshoot this was to, first of all, play around with the carburetor. And, and once we get it running right, I'll show you some carburetor work on this. But uh, there's quite a few videos out there how to tune a, a Weber 3236, what, which is what's on this. Uh, somebody was smart along the way and took off the original, uh, the factory thing that's like a computer assisted carburetor. And to this date, I have never heard any good comments about it. Maybe if it just rolled off the assembly line and, and you took good care of it, I don't even know if it would run right then. So. Anyway, they put a standard carburetor on it, one that didn't or wasn't affected with uh, with the digital tronics there and, and uh, uh, had its little fingers and everything. And evidently what I hear is the digital stuff tends to not cooperate after some time and, and makes it run very angrily. So I guess the stuff, it, uh, it was all for emissions. And I, and I guess this stuff just failed right away. And, and there had lots of vacuum lines and lots of little digital fingers in the way these things work. Early attempts before the actual fuel injection took over. So, hey, if you got, if you got the four liter fuel injected, you're in there. If you got the old 4.2 back here with the uh, that original carburetor, I suggest you uh, convert it over and do the nutter bypass on it. That's something to do with the uh, electric tronics on the distributor, or excuse me, the ignition. So we will uh, go over what's been going on uh, off the camera here. I, I, I did some troubleshooting. Uh, I did a compression check on it after I got the uh, carburetor like what I thought was working properly. You know, made sure that it's, it's uh, actually emulsifying the fuel. That's a big word. Let's just say it turns the fuel into a mixture of water, or excuse me, no water, actual uh, fuel and air, and it's in a, in a vapor form rather than, you know, drip, 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 because it was doing that initially, and it was, it was pretty off. So I pulled the old sparker pluggers out, and they're all laying up here. They were kind of in order, and I'll show you what they look like. If you, if you know enough, and you have a problem, your motor will kind of talk to you, but not like talking to you like this. It'll, it'll show you things and those things will probably tell you what's going on. And eventually, if you're, you're smart, unlike me, you can put those clues together and kind of figure out where the problem is. Now, keep in mind this motor's been setting for a little while, uh, setting as long as I've had it. And then on top of that, I don't have any, I think it's been setting for like seven years prior to that. So. That's, that's your first clue. Engines and mechanical things like that, they, they just don't like to set very long. So when they set, things get a little tight, things get rusty, things get sticky. So remember that, that's a pretty good clue right there. 
So what we did is we got the old uh, carburetor working or went through it and cleaned it up and made sure all the little ports and little holes in there were free of yuck because again, when you leave them set in today's age of fuel, they tend to plug up or turn to varnish or turn to crap and really make a mess out of those little holes and orifices inside the carburetor. Got all that taken care of. We cranked it up again, or I cranked it up again, and didn't run a whole lot better. So the next thing it did is started pulling sparkler plugger wires off and uh, found out that when I pulled this one off and put it back on and, you know, I'm not brave enough to just grab it. So I had, you know, a hundred mile long pliers on it, you know, and gloves and, you know, I'm kind of a, a wimp when it comes to that kind of stuff like noise and I really don't like to get zapped either. That's not a fun. For those of you that have been zapped by uh, HEI or electronic ignition, you, you remember that and it tends to stick in the old brain when every time you grab something hot like that. Especially if you've ever been zapped by electric fence or something like that. Anyway, anyway, stay on target, Rob. So when I pulled the, the wire off with my 100, long, 100 mile long plyrus, uh, nothing really changed. So I'm like, there's a problem child right there. So I, I pulled the number five and the number six cylinders off and uh, they weren't really changing much. Number, number five was, but number six was, it, it wasn't really doing much. So that's, that's where I, I figured that our problem was. The next thing I did is to take the old sparker pluggers out. And like I said before, I started looking at them. So when we get that far, I'll show you these, these spark plugs laid out on here. And then I, I did a compression test. And yeah, I didn't film at all, but most of you that are watching this probably have seen how to do a compression test. And, and there's plenty of YouTube videos out there. So I'll just tell you what I saw. Number one was about 135. And I keep in mind, these are all supposed to be 10, within 10% 10 of each other. So 135, two was at 150, three was at 150, four was at 150. Five was at like 130, and then six, remember that's our theoretical problem child, was at like 90 or so. And those of you that are super brilliant and smarts with those motors will tell you or will know that 90 is on the borderline of even having a functional cylinder there. So that's a, one of our problems. So I put a little oil down in the, uh, in the, spark plug hole there, little lubricators. Probably should have done some Marble Mystery oil, but I think I just put on some, what I had was some 10W30 or something, and did another compression test and it came up a little bit. So that, that kind of pointed me towards the rings or maybe a valve's not working right or whatever. So the next step I did is I took the valve cover off. And don't mind it now, it's missing a few components if you can see that. Took the valve cover off and made sure all push rods were lined up with the rockers, you know, and all those mechanical things were at least look right. You know, one's not going like this or one's not bent like a, like a pretzel or something like that. As I said, you know, when these things set, things tend to get sticky. So maybe a valve or something might have got stuck or maybe there's a valve that's already down. So, uh, or stuck down. So I went through and looked at all the, uh, all the, uh, the valves and the springs and they all look pretty uniform. And I went and wiggle checked all the, the push rods and, and they looked okay so I was, I was relatively certain that the that the valves were good and the push rods were good and probably the rockers were good so I spun it around a little bit and made sure that you know whoop whoop do that correctly you know intake exhaust and they all look pretty uniform and forgot that I had the uh, mechanical fuel pump unhooked and sprayed gas everywhere but note to self make sure you hook that stuff up or disconnect it or somehow disable it so you don't have flammable gas going everywhere. Probably should unhook the ignition too because I had spark and everything going on. Not not super smart. You know, you get in the moment, you're like, yeah, I want to see a turnover and you forget that all that stuff's still hooked up. Uh, so where were we? Stay on target. Valves look good, push rods look good. They were doing their whoop whoop properly and uh, so I figured it was a problem with either a valve that was bent or maybe a uh, cylinder problem with maybe a stuck ring or something like that, or maybe even a broken ring. So I took the head off and oh my God, 
if you ever take one of these heads off, make sure you take the intake and exhaust manifold off first because that thing is stupid heavy. And even though I got all the front end apart on this thing, it's still probably 100, 150 pounds and it's awkward and it's leaking water everywhere and it's got oil everywhere. And, and you know, I got I don't have a whole lot of room to move around. So either use your engine hoist or, or two people, God, that probably would have made a big difference. Uh, or take it apart so it's a little bit less. Just took the head off, uh, took it over to the bench, and we'll go over to the bench here in a minute, and I'll, and I'll show you what we're looking at there. And then, uh, so with that, we'll just, uh, I'll pick you up and we'll start looking at some of this stuff. So as you can see, it's probably bright. And uh, it's missing some components there, chiefly the head. So there's all of our roundy cylinder looking things. And you know, I'm going to tell you, they're not in the best shape. When I bought this mo or Jeep project here, basket case, whatever you want to call it, uh, of course the previous owner said, oh, that's a rebuilt motor. You know, um, if I had a, even a, a penny for all the times I've heard that, you know, I'd probably be a little bit better off than I am now, which wouldn't take much. So, yeah, I noticed a couple of, you know, yeah, something wasn't happy there. If you can see that, we'll get right in there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure something got angry there at one time. So, if you look at the tops of these pistons, you know, this one looks a little damp, and but this one doesn't look quite the same along with this. So, they're all looking a little inconsistent of each other. And then you get down here, down to these, where our problem child area is, and and that one looks different altogether. And if you look at them cylinder walls, they don't look like these ones up here do. I hope you can see this. It's harder for me. I should probably get the light up here, but I have to dig it out. Anyway, actually, that one should have a big hole in it. Not the piston, the cylinder. So, again, those are those clue thingies that should tell you that, hey, you know, there's something going on here. So this thing let's back up here where the glare gets a little bit better this thingy here is probably supposed to be in there so we took it out and uh i'm just gonna make a long story short if you look these ring things here are supposed to be moving all about the piston and you notice that this one this one's moving, but this top one, let's spin you around a little bit. Hopefully I'm not. The top one is not. So that's a stuck ring. And that's probably from just sitting around. Wow, that piston has definitely had some angry go on there. So there is evidence that this motor was taken apart and it's had some work done. I think these are obviously the original pistons with all that damage, because that didn't happen in the short time that it was supposedly ran. But what we have here is a stuck ring, and I'm sure that's from setting for a while and probably lack of lubrication in the cylinders. So we're gonna work that ring loose and clean it all up and probably put it back together, because I'm thinking that theoretically based on what I've seen it has had some work done to it we'll put a little hone action on the on the uh, on the cylinder walls and clean all that up so we just popped the old Earl pan off down there so you can see it over there and we just disconnected it the bearings uh, I don't know if you can see that or not they're right there I'm just gonna hold you in there they look pretty good sorry about all the wiggles here so that's what leads me to believe that somebody's been in here and done some work. So we're going to go over here to the bench, slowly. Model A radiator grill or shell. Here is our head. And our head's not too bad. If you remember some of the other, the 73 Jeep, 74 Jeep, the... Uh, the head wasn't too bad on it either, but it had a blown head gasket. 
So what we did is this is the number six cylinder here and I thought maybe by chance it had a bent valve. So we pulled the valves out. Here's the intake valve here and I spun them around and we're probably going to lap all these valves because that's not the best looking but it's consistent all the way around. And I put the the valve in the uh, in the cordless drill over here and spun it and it's definitely not bent. Here is the uh, the intake valve and it's it's not looking too bad. So that's when we went to the the, uh, the old piston and ring theory. If you can see in there this is the seat area and and it's not looking bad at all. So but we'll lap it and make sure that it's uh, okay maybe we'll do a video but most people I'm pretty sure sure that are walking watching this kind of stuff I should learn how to talk probably already know how to lap valves you know if you have a machine awesome we, most people just use the little stick with a suction cup and some valve grinding compound or valve lapping compound and then they run back and forth and clean that up till it's nice and shiny and we'll put it back together clean all this up the head gaskets down there it looked pretty good I didn't see any like unhappiness between the uh, uh, the cylinders right like a blown head gasket like this area here where this one was leaking into this one or leaking into like the oil gallery or leaking into one of the water there wasn't any water in the cylinder so we did all right there this is the exhaust gasket or the exhaust manifold gasket and believe it or not it looks like nothing was really leaking I mean there's a little bit there and a little bit on that end but it wasn't it wasn't leaking past it so the the intake manifold is over here underneath the cover as much dirt and crap as I have in here we're gonna clean that up real pretty like and then we're also going to plug up the remaining uh, uh, emissions happiness on this one too. I think the exhaust manifold is over here. Yeah, here we go. This is some type of uh, O2 sensor or something. It's like I said, it's the beginnings of the uh, fuel injection era. I think they were working the bugs out of everything. This is for the EGR valve, and. Uh, I'm not living in California, so and as much as this Jeep will probably be driven, I'm sure there's trucks running around here that dump a whole lot more coal into the or roll coal than this thing ever will. So sorry to you guys that do that. We'll take that out and plug her and uh, put it back together. I have a header for this thing, but it's a 4.2. It's not a 4.0. So this is what I thought maybe this thing had been rebuilt. I'm seeing this sticker on the back. Maybe if somebody wants to comment and say, oh yeah, that's what that is. Or maybe it's something to tell you that it got too hot. I don't know. But anyway, that's where we're at with this thing. We're going to clean it all up and uh, put it back together. And hopefully we'll have a little bit more compression than 95 pounds. And oh, by the way, if you guys have ever seen spark plugs, have you ever seen anything this big? Now look at look how big that is to my fingers here. That's a monster. It's either a tractor or something. And these are also the kind that you can, well, can you? Not that one. I have some here that you can take apart somewhere. Yeah, here's one. You can actually take these old monsters apart. You take this and separate this if it'll go. Of course, it's, you know, 100,000 years old. So, But you can take them apart and clean them. That's what they did back in the old days. Not so much now. So... Anyway, we'll bring it back here when we get some more going on it. So, short one on this one. Uh, I'm going to clean everything up, lap them valves. I may or may not do a video on that. Like I said, lots of people have done lapping valves before, and uh, it's probably going to be boring as hell. So, I'll make this wrap up pretty quick because I know I ramble a lot. So, I want to thank you for watching Wrenching with Rob. Uh, if you like this, or do like the watching the videos hit the like button subscribe share it and uh, eventually we'll get this thing back to uh, where we could start it and I, I promise we'll have a first start type thing and yes I will get back to the deuce and a half I plan on pulling the tank out cleaning it all up and then we'll do an actual first start on that and finish off that that uh, original first start 
and it'll be part two where hopefully it either runs great or it runs away and blows up. So, hey, I want to thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Uh, have a good day and thank you. Have a good one. See you.